If any of you are receiving this, I am at the abandoned Panic Moon Research Station somewhere at the border between Arizona and Utah, that infinitesimal dot vanishing in the desert's merciless vastness. I refuse to believe that I am the only one of my kind, the only other, still alive on Panic Moon Station. Rust is dripping from my mouth. I don't know if I will make it past the first season on this gigantic decaying research outpost, but there is one thing I do know. The creature inside me is growing. The cramps are getting worse. Oh, the cramps, rhythmic. The first season is nearing its end. I can see it in the mechanic's eyes. Dr. Reza crawls Yellow-tinted stare gleams from the pockets of the infrared shades of darkness of the core dome's sprawling underground deck, the bionic growth chamber, where nightmares are born, Ganymede. Ganymede feels strangely abrim with life. Its walls are covered in crater moss, bizarre luminescent spots are glimmering up here and there, an earthy organic smell protrudes from its pores. I am laying upright on the grow pod in its middle, while Dr. Krull is frantically hovering between the small lab stations around me, except the area behind me. She never ventures there. By now, my face feels like the moon's crater landscape with gazers of pain boiling beneath the surface. After all, she's not merely Dr. Krull. She's heads will roll, crawl. And right now, she's in one of her dangerous moods. Are your organics still in love with me, Roncha? She asks. I evade her glance, stare to the side onto the moss-lined wall beneath her thin aluminum suit, the lightly glowing complex tattoos on her perfectly symmetrical dark bob, her olive complexion. Indeed, my organics are. Nonetheless, it's not entirely voluntary. My love, you see, is manufactured. I am borrowing my own body, an organic appliance controlled by its owner, with oxytocin, liquid love. As she approaches, a sudden wave of euphoria washes over my senses and I cannot help my lips cusping into an uncontrollable grin, a hysterical, Chuckle, my teeth must be smeared with rust. I am laughing at my own demise. See, Roncha, you're happy here with me, even if you're bleeding a little. Promise me you'll stay. She runs her index finger along my swollen lips, her amber eyes aglow. Say it. I press my lips tightly together, as if I have a choice. Talk to me, you degenerate! Cell stack. Her voice breaks, but her flared nostrils and frenzied glances to the moon clock directly above my pod give away her bellicose inner state. All nine moons have emerged on the clock. She will soon take what is inside me. You cannot fabricate it yourself, can you? The words force themselves out of my desert dry mouth. The mechanic's expression freezes as I sense her thoughts shift inward. A long silence sinks into Ganymede like radioactive crystals encompassing the unspeakable. Finally, she clears her throat. I, I once did, but, but he, he, she trembles. All of a sudden, Dr. Krull seems so vulnerable, shrunken crushed by Ganymede's grand gravity, a gravity she herself created. Bewildered, I watch my own hand extend itself to her in compassion. He said he didn't want to share me with the, the little one. He, he was so powerful physically, my, my body hasn't recovered. You do not have to run away anymore, I say, tears sting in my eyes. A ruffling sound emerges, something jerks me back. It is the pod's mycelia, which quickly tightened the grip around my chest until I am pressed against the pod so hard it compresses my breath. The crater moss releases its airborne drugs 
until I am drowning in dizziness, limp. Deliriously, I start to fantasize about my after-season retirement on Panic Moon's upper deck. Oh, to see the real moon for the first time, you will forgive my naivety. Somewhere buried deeply in my chest, a question erupts. Am I the last of my kind? What happened to all the others? My voice climbs and I am not proud of its shrill tone. But she does not hear me. The mechanic is rummaging in her cabinet at the opposite end of the bionic growth chamber, murmuring phrases about gene mods and astrobiology, how, how strong and adaptable he will be, ultra-stabilized oxytocin, liquid love, to last beyond Earth, beyond death. death. Just as the moon clock starts playing an eerie melody composed of triumphant, complicated harmonies, as heavy as lead. The time has come. She turns around to me. When my glance falls upon her hands, panic claws at the back of my throat and my heart flutters hysterically like an animal caught in my chest. That's when I notice it. The fleshy, gentle kick against my skin from the inside of my lower abdominal segment. Those warm movements, this Uplifting, new urge, liquid love from the creature. My eyes open wider and wider as I sense my organics rewire themselves in response, as if to unleash my own instincts, my own senses. Something else is here, the faintest presence of life. I remember. This reflection in the mechanic's eyes once, a reflection of what lies behind my pot, where she never goes. The shattered bodies of the other others, stacked against the wall, rotting away, slowly turning mad in the twilight. I sense the hairs on my neck rise. Dr. Kroll's shadow is the deep red velvet of open flesh and the mechanical harvester gloves are glinting on her hands. Murderer, I whisper. She, rush, she rushes toward me, her claw fingers dragging on the ground, her yellow eyes ablaze with furious excitement, fixating the vault of my exposed abdomen. A pulse of energy surges through every cell of my body, electrifying my muscle fibers. Time seems to slow down. I manage to break up the hardened mycelium grid over me. I jump up, strike the side of her head, and rust flows from her wounds and flows. Her eyes fill with terror. What? What, what have you done? Her claws drill into my shoulder as she tumbles in surprise. You, you, you will die miserably. You're your engineered cell stacks will stop releasing neurotransmitters without my pheromones. I lay my shaking index finger on her lips. Shh, I have him. He is made of you. And just like that, I let go of her, my love, to witness her fall into the stack of others. What happens next is terrifying. The other's organics must still be wired to this ultra-long-lasting liquid love of hers because their parts start crawling towards her, grasping for her for the last mechanic. An act of love, love to last beyond earth, beyond death. A scream seems stuck in her throat as she gasps for air in horror, struggling in panic, but the wiggly sea of awakened, murdered lovers devours her. Some of the broken off arms are caressing her, others have latched on tightly as if to guard a treasured possession, others are, well, I have to turn away. I clasp my hands before my mouth, fall on my knees. As the last strokes of the moon clock symphony fades, the fever in her eyes subsides to the nebula-like glimmering of warm honey as if she had recaptured her dream for a split second just before the flesh-colored seas engulf her.
You called him he, she whispers in my head. A profound euphoria wells up in me. It turns out I am not the last and he is coming. Thank you.